Hello everyone! I cannot see how many people are on here, but hello to everyone! Um, I hope you are all very well. Um, I'm very excited to be doing a live today and later on Ferdy Shaw will be tuning in, so very exciting. Um, but yeah, today I'm just going to be doing another Q&A. There's already 135 of you, that's wild! <laughs> Um, but yeah, today I'm going to be doing a Q&A um, like I normally do. I have a lot of your prepared questions here that I got you guys to ask me and feel free to send in lots of questions. And then later on at nine o'clock my time in British summer time, Freddie Shaw, who plays Artemis Fowl, will be joining us and we can uh, I'll be asking him some questions from you guys and you can send in your questions too. So I'm very excited to get started. So I have your questions here and I'm very ready to answer them. So let's get started, shall we? First of all, how is everyone? <laughs> how are you all doing? I'm good, I hope you are all well. I hope you're all safe, um, because the world is crazy at the moment. So I hope everybody is well and safe and I hope you're all doing okay. Now, question time. <laughs> okay, so um, the first question I have is, what was your most memorable scene that you filmed? That's a very good question. I feel like every scene on this film was very memorable to film just because when you're filming a film that has like fairies and magic and just like beautiful fantasy other worlds in it like every scene is going to be very memorable simply because there's so many amazing aspects that go into it like in one scene you know Josh is eating dirt so that's a very memorable scene <laughs> and another scene I'm flying another scene we're fighting a troll like there's like every scene is definitely very memorable the most memorable one to film though it's still very close to me even though we filmed it two years ago it is still it doesn't feel like two years ago at all but um that's a very hard question. I remember all of my scenes very well and that was something that was so lovely about watching the film was that every time a scene came up it was like I was getting a flood of nostalgia from the day we filmed that. I'd be like oh that's the day that we did this and that's the day we did that and that's the day like Josh made that joke and etc etc. So I think all the scenes are memorable to film simply because I absolutely loved making this film so I remember every day very very well because I absolutely loved it so every scene <laughs> that's a really bad answer but yeah I that's the only answer you're gonna get I'm afraid was that every every scene was memorable to film and um, how was I'm um, trying to work with things that weren't there like VFX and CGI it was actually really cool I feel like a lot of people think it's quite difficult but personally for me I love using my imagination and creativity I always have so I loved the opportunity to get to imagine all these magical worlds and creatures that weren't there. Um, I found it really fun, personally. Um, best moment while making Artemis Fowl? That's a very hard question because there were a lot. Um, there, every moment was incredible. I mean, but my favourite thing about making Artemis Fowl was the cast and the crew. I mean, oh my goodness, we all became like a huge family and I absolutely loved working with every single person on this film and that was what made it like such a special experience. I absolutely loved it. it was it was incredible and um, I'm still in contact with not only like Ferdia and Tam and Josh, I'm also in contact with loads of the crew and a lot more of the cast who I all miss very much so hopefully be seeing them soon once everything's back to normal but for now stay at home <laughs> what do you like to do in your free time and what do you love most about acting and um, what I love most about acting is getting to tell stories that is definitely my favorite thing in the whole world I've always loved stories from as long as I can remember I loved fairy tales growing up I loved reading for as long as I can remember I still do I just love stories and so getting to bring stories to life is incredibly cool it's a really big honor and getting to bring stories to life that are so relevant and funny and it can take you it can really it's a really good way to escape if you're going through anything is film and tv i mean personally for me i love to watch a film if i'm feeling down or if i'm feeling happy or anything film and tv will always be there for you and um, and especially right now i feel like everybody's definitely turning to series and movies to watch and educate themselves with so getting to bring stories to life is definitely my favorite thing about acting and um, what do you like to do in your free time i have i do, I have too many hobbies. I I have a lot of interests. They're mostly in creative things. I also love sports. Um, I play hockey and tennis. Um, I love working out and running. Um, but in like creative terms, I love writing and photography. I also love singing and acting. Obviously, I love singing. Um, 
Yeah, I do. And I've also, especially, especially over quarantine, I've been baking so much. Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, for the premiere, actually. So um, if you didn't know, today is actually one week from when Artemis Fowl was released on Disney Plus, which is wild. I mean, it's one week. So it's one week that is mad. Um, so if you haven't watched it, it's been out a week now. Come on. <laughs> um, but um, for the premiere, my family and all, we all got together and we sat in the sitting room. We all watched the film together and I baked about like so many desserts. I baked um, Victoria Sponge. I made chocolate chip cookies. Um, I made fairy cakes, like cupcakes. And I also made, um, I can't remember what I said, a lemon tray bake. Like I made a lot of I made a lot of cakes and sweets. <laughs> so that was definitely something to keep me busy. So and if now isn't the time to try and figure out if you like to bake or not. I don't know when is. So definitely, that's something I would have to re recommend. Definitely dive into your hobbies. Something else I've been doing during quarantine is that, um, so I can, I've always been able to, since I was about seven or eight, um, I taught myself how to mirror write so that, you know, when you hold your writing up into a mirror, that's the only time it's legible. And the reason I taught myself to do that was because, Leonardo da Vinci did it and <laughs> so I thought it was really cool so I wanted to do it and um, but something I've always wanted to do is I've always wanted to be ambidextrous which is where you can write with your right hand and your left hand I'm right-handed so right now what I'm trying to do this is what quarantine has brought me to I'm attempting to write with my left hand so <laughs> I mean it looks like a child wrote it <laughs> but we're getting there so that's this is the time to learn new skills so if I was ever be gonna teach myself how to be ambidextrous now's the time I just saw someone said you speaks a lot kid I'm very aware I'm very sorry I talk way too much <laughs> I I speak very fast way too much and very loud so apologies um, what's your favorite deleted scene from the movie? That's a very good question. We had them that unfortunately didn't make it into the final cut. I love the final cut, but there are so many that didn't make it into the final cut. Um, definitely some favorites for me. There are so many. There are so many funny, amazing scenes. But one definitely for me that sticks out is there's a scene it's actually if you go onto Disney Plus and you look at the extras there is a bunch of deleted scenes and it's on there and it's the scene where Mult first meets Butler and the day we filmed that was the first day Josh was on set and it was the first day we were filming with Josh and oh my goodness it took us so long to film that scene it is absolutely hilarious <laughs> it is such a good scene i'm very sad that it didn't make the final cut but um it's really funny so at least it's in the extras so if you want to go watch it it's when Malton butler meet it's very funny and there are so many jokes that didn't even make it into that cut but oh my goodness when i tell you we were falling around on the floor laughing we were falling around on the floor laughing <laughs> okay so do you have a secret talent the only kind of secret talent i have is that i can mirror write I genuinely, I, I love history. I find it so fascinating. So learning about Leonardo da Vinci and learning about how he made all his notes in mirror writing, I was like, I want to do that. So that's what I did. <laughs> um, so that's my only secret talent I can think of. Sorry, I'm, to be very boring, I'm, I'm very, I'm very sorry. I'm flicking through your questions. Um, did you have to cut your hair? I did have to cut my hair. So as you can see now, my hair is like in a bulb. And um, this is what, unfortunately, I don't know what it is, but you know, quarantine. So, um, but, <laughs> um, but yeah, I did have to cut my hair short. I used to have, if you've seen any pictures of me when I was in Matilda, I had very long hair. And then when I read the books, obviously when I was about 10, it, one of the main things about Holly is that she's a pixie cut. So I always pictured Holly with a pixie cut. And then when I was auditioning for the film, they obviously didn't make us cut our hair for auditioning, but it was always kind of implied that if we, if one of us were so lucky to get the role, we would have to, we would have to rock a pixie cut, which I was 100% down for if I was lucky enough to get the part. <laughs> and then I was lucky enough to get the part, which was mind blowing within itself. But, um, I cut my hair, they asked me, they were like, you can wear a wig if you want to. And I was like, no, 100%, I would love to cut my hair to a pixie cut because I definitely feel like it would help me embody Holly more and feel more like her. And also, when else am I going to have a pixie cut? So if this isn't the opportunity to do so, I don't know when it is. So yes, I cut my hair to a pixie cut. And as you can see, it's growing 
very slowly, but it's growing. <laughs> um, what is your favourite book from the Artemis Fowl saga? That's a good question. I, I absolutely love all the Artemis Fowl books. I've read all eight books I don't know how many times. Um, I read them all when I was about 10 and then when I was auditioning I reread them twice and then during the film I reread a bunch of them and since then I've reread them because I love them so much. So I feel confident in saying that I know my Artemis Fowl books. <laughs> um, so my favourite one would either have to be the first one just because it's the first one and it's like really iconic and also because the film is based off the first one. Um, but if I had to pick another one I would pick The Time Paradox. I love The Time Paradox. There's so many cool like aspects in there. There's so many cool themes. I mean there's time travelling and there's just so much in that book and I absolutely love the action and everything that goes on with it. So. I would have to say The Time Paradox and the original first Artemis Fowl. Um, did you feel any pressure playing such an important role? A little bit, simply because I grew up with the books as so many people did. I mean, these books have been around longer than I've been alive, which is wild. Um, but I definitely felt a bit of pressure simply because I loved Holly so much growing up and she was such a role model for me. So if she's such a role model for me, I mean, she's obviously such a big role model for so many other people, especially the people who have been around and read the books since when they were published. So I really wanted to make sure that I honoured Holly as much as possible and I really hope I did that. I made sure to do my research, I did my homework. Um, so simply I only felt a bit of pressure because I wanted to bring the role as much to life as possible. So, but apart from that, I feel, I, I hopefully, hopefully think I did that. <laughs> Favourite thing to do in quarantine? I, as I said earlier, I've been baking a lot and also I've been taking up loads of weird little hobbies because why not? I mean, um, yeah, I've been doing a lot of weird, weird stuff. I've definitely, I've been writing a lot, I've been reading a lot. I've been watching so many films and TV shows um, because I had, I've already, I, oh, I'm such a big film buff and a huge series buff. So I've been like, had stuff on my list for a long time <laughs> and so if this isn't the time to catch up, I mean, I don't know what is. I'm seeing a lot of people asking where Ferdy is. He's coming in at nine. I didn't lie to you. He's coming in at nine and he'll be staying with us and he will be answering some questions. I didn't lie to you. I promise he is coming. <laughs> Ferdy is coming. I just thought, hi, Violet. Violet played Matilda with me. So hello, Violet. Um, yep. Yeah, um, so I've been doing a lot of, I've been watching so many series. A series that I've also been watching is um, I love the... Um, West Wing which is from the late 90s early 2000s and it's about the White House and I find it so interesting I love political dramas I love dramas but I love tv and film of any kind if we're being completely honest um what was it like to fly around in the fairy cable rig during filming so incredibly cool so cool oh my goodness um I have never done any stunts before I mean I'd never done anything I couldn't do gymnastics before the only thing I could do before Artemis Fowl was a cartwheel simply because in Matilda we had to do a cartwheel apart from that I would not have known how to do that only because of Matilda I knew how to do a single cartwheel don't ask me to do two one <laughs> um but so when I went into training to become Holly um I got to learn so many new skills I got to learn how to kickbox I did boxing training every day I did a lot of strength training I would go to the stunts um for many hours every day and build up my core strength build up all of my strength just full body strength just to make sure I was in really good physical condition for flying because it takes a lot of energy and a lot of core work and um, to be able to hold yourself in a flying position your core has to be really strong you need to be able to hold yourself so I did a lot of training to build up my strength and I got to work on my gymnastics <laughs> and I also got to learn self-defense and I got to work out different stunt routines with so many of the stunts people which was so much fun and um, so getting to fly was incredibly cool I got to learn how to do um, somersaults and back somersaults and barrels. There's a bit in the film, I don't, is this a spoiler? There's a bit in the film where I'm flying and I fall back and you see Holly tumbling backwards and that's actually me, which is really cool. <laughs> um, but yeah, I got, I had so much fun flying. I would, I tried to bring the rig home with me, but they wouldn't let me. And I'm pretty sad about that, if I'm being completely honest. They said I wasn't allowed and all this, but I really, I, I did try. I. I did try. 
Um, when did you know you wanted to be an actress? Um, I've known for as long as I can remember, ever since I knew what an actress was, ever since I knew what acting was, I was like, I want to do that. <laughs> um, I started, I started acting just in a class when I was about seven um, because it was something to do after school and all my friends were doing it so I wanted to be with my friends and so I went to the class and never had heard of acting, never done drama or the performing arts or anything before and just completely fell in love with it and that's when I knew um, but definitely a moment that confirmed it for me was that um, the first film I ever did is a film called Love Rosie starring Lily Collins and S Sam Claffin. And I got the opportunity to play a young Lily Collins in the film. I played a young Rosie and I'm in one scene, but it was so much fun. <laughs> and the minute I walked on the set, I knew that this is what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. So, but there's so many, that's not something that everybody immediately knows when they're young. There's so many people who don't realize until they're a lot older. I mean, I see a lot of the time, Rebel Wilson, for example, is amazing. And she went to college and got a law degree and only then realized that she wanted to pursue acting. So there's so much time, never be, if you think you might have an interest in it, but you're not sure if you want to pursue it, give it time. You've all the time in the world. So um sorry as i'm scrolling through the questions let's look at a few questions here how old are you i am 16 i'm going to turn 17 in november but right now i am 16. <laughs> yeah i see that i see that question a lot i'm 16 in case you did not know have you seen the game of thrones i have um i actually read the books before i watched them i'm a big fan of reading books before watching series or anything um just because i want to be able to compare the two and see the differences and i love the game of thrones books if you like the game of thrones tv shows oh my goodness you will love the game of thrones books they are incredible and the detail in them is immaculate um i mean it's so it, really transports you to that world of Game of Thrones. So I've seen, I've seen the first season and I don't have the second book. So I want to wait until I've read the second book until I see the second series. Um, but hopefully I'll be able to get that book soon. Is it hard to become an actor? Only if you're, only if you're not 100% in it. If you kind of want to be an actor, but you're not really sure, then it's, it's not going to, it's going to be harder for you because you want, it's the same with anything that you want to do in life. You have to give 110% in everything that you do, whether it be um, a small role, whether it be sweeping backstage, whether it be a big role, whether it be anything, you have to give 110% because that's how you know that you're in it to win it. And the harder you work, the more results you will get. So if you're willing to put all the work in, and if you're doing it because you love the arts and you love telling stories and you love the performing arts instead of doing it for reasons like money or fame then you will definitely you'll definitely get further in the business if you're doing it for the right reasons so make sure make sure that you know exactly what you want to do and you know how much you want to commit to it and why you want to commit to it before you pursue anything um freddie's going to join at nine yes he is mm-hmm what Harry Potter house are you in? I am in Hufflepuff. Um, I posted a picture a while ago. I am obsessed with the Harry Potter books. If you somehow do not know, I am obsessed. <laughs> um, and I posted a picture a while ago when I just, I dressed up as Hermione Granger way more than I would like to admit. Um, but um, And I'm wearing a Gryffindor tiny. But I'm actually a Hufflepuff. I am a proud Hufflepuff. Hufflepuffs are the best. So say what you want but i mean we've had some pretty cool people in our houses that's what the fantastic beasts movie are incredible and i mean hufflepuff so hufflepuffs are amazing that's all i'm saying um but um i'm a very proud hufflepuff what is your favorite nolan film i assume that means christopher nolan <laughs> Um, but I love Christopher Nolan films and there's a new film coming out directed by Christopher Nolan that Kenneth Branagh is in and Kenneth Branagh directed Artemis Fowl so I'm very excited to watch it. Um, my favourite Christopher Nolan film, either Inception or Dunkirk. I love um, period dramas, I'm very interested in history and also films, so films about history are perfect and um, so I loved Dunkirk, I went to see it and the cast and that is phenomenal, I mean Harry Styles is 
perfect. Um, but yeah, the cast is amazing in Dunkirk. Which famous actor or actress would you like to work with in the future? That's a good question. There are so many incredible actor and actresses that I would like to work with. Definitely two that I would love to work with would be, I would love to work with Saoirse Ronan at one point. I think she's incredible. And um, I've looked up to her for so long. So I would love to work with Saoirse Ronan. Um, another, an actor that I would love to work with, I would love to work with Daniel Radcliffe because I'm a huge Harry Potter fan, but also because he's gone to do so many amazing movies apart from Harry Potter. And even though he will, I think he said it in an interview, even though he will always be associated with Harry Potter, he's still able to fully put himself in amazing roles. And I mean, you fully believe him in these roles, even though you're watching it. And at the beginning you do think, yeah, it's Harry Potter, but you do fall into his story and his storytelling. He's incredible. And also just to get to meet Daniel Radcliffe would be, that'd be pretty great. <laughs> What was your favorite thing about Holly Short? My favorite thing about Holly Short, we share a little bit in common. I would like to think I'm like Holly Short. I may be wrong, but I'd like to think it. <laughs> um, Holly and I, we're, we're very sarcastic. I have a very sarcastic sense of humor, as does Holly. So that's one thing I love about her, her sense of humor. She's so witty and smart and quick witted. I love that about her. Um, but my, I think my all time favorite thing about Holly is, how she will always do what's right no matter it no matter what the consequences she will always do what is fundamentally right if it means that Ruth is going to scream at her or if it means she's going to get hurt she puts everybody else's needs above hers she makes sure that she's doing what is right and I would love to think that I'm like I would do the same thing in the same situation hopefully I won't ever get kidnapped by Artemis Fowl that's fingers crossed but I would like to think in that situation she would still do what is right. So that's my favorite thing about Holly. Who is your favorite superhero? My favorite superhero, I love Marvel films. I'm very much, I love DC films. I like DC films, but I love Marvel films. But if I had to pick a DC, I would have to say, I don't know. I don't watch a lot of DC films simply because I'm such a big Marvel fan. So I'm gonna go in Marvel. My favorite Marvel character is Black Widow. She is so cool. I absolutely love her. I also love Wanda as well because I've always been obsessed with magic and everything mystical. And so I love her powers. I love the powers of telekinesis, but definitely Black Widow. She is so cool. I absolutely love her. I love Scarlett Johansson. Would you ever like to work with Tom Holland? Yes, that is another actor. Tom Holland. Oh my goodness. I love Tom Holland. <laughs> I love Tom Holland. He's amazing. Um, and I've I've known um about him since he was in Billy Elliot. And um, so I yeah, I'd be I'd be pretty happy to meet Tom Holland. <laughs> Um, who's your favorite YouTuber? Um, I don't really watch a lot of YouTube if I'm being completely honest. I watch more so a lot of um Netflix series and different like I watch a lot of series as opposed to YouTube but if I had to pick a favorite YouTuber I would say Carrie Hope Fletcher and she is a musical theater actress and she is incredible I absolutely love her um, and I love musical theater so getting to watch all the behind the scenes of what she's up to um that's my favorite thing about it are you also a Star Wars fan because they're very Yes, I'm a huge Star Wars fan. I love Star Wars. That's something that Ferdy and I definitely have in common is that we both love Star Wars. We also both love Harry Potter. How long were the auditions for Artemis Fowl? Um, so I auditioned for Artemis Fowl initially first back in June of 2017, which is three years ago. <laughs> that is mad. But yeah, I auditioned through that. Oh my goodness. Um, three years ago. Um, and... Then I did my first audition in June and then that continued until I think the last audition I did was in November. Um, so I went from June to November and it was so much fun. I got to, it was such an amazing experience. I'd never done a screen test before. I'd never auditioned for a film of this like stature. So, and I was so excited to be auditioning for one of my favorite characters of all time. So I absolutely loved the experience. And the fact that I was able to play her in the film was a dream come true, if I'm being completely honest. Um, Downton Abbey or The Crown? That's a good question. They're both amazing. I've watched The Crown 
three times, I want to say, because the crown is, I mean, Claire Foy is just incredible, and so is Matt Smith, I mean, oh my goodness, and the, the whole cast is incredible, and then I've, pr but I've probably watched Downton Abbey way more than three times, <laughs> Downton Abbey is my favourite TV show of all time, so I'm gonna have to go Downton Abbey simply because I've watched it so many times, but I love The Crown, and I cannot wait for season four, which is coming out in November, I want to say, but I'm very excited, so, um, do you like Stranger Things? Yes, I love Stranger Things. I cannot wait for season four. And so, I mean, the teaser for if you haven't if you haven't watched Stranger Things at all, you need to go do that. <laughs> um, but also, if you haven't seen like the teaser for season four, oh my goodness, go do that now. Well, after after this, but go do it after this. Um, oh my goodness, I'm so excited. I love I love Stranger Things. It's such an amazing show. It definitely fits in. I love um I love 80s music, so I love the soundtracks in it and I love the clothes, I love the vibes, I love the 80s. <laughs> and also, I mean, the story is incredible, the acting is incredible. So, definitely definitely love Stranger Things. How was working with Sir Kenneth Branagh? Incredible. Oh my goodness. I've I've known Ken's work since he was Gilroy Lockhart in the Chamber of Secrets and so getting to meet him in real life was very surreal seeing a person that you've watched so many times standing in front of you speaking to you is very surreal which is why it was surreal meeting like Josh Gad and Judy Dench it, and working with Ken was an absolute honour oh my goodness he is incredible um, being with him and watching him at work and hearing his ideas and his thoughts on your performance and the film and the world is like watching a true act it is watching a true act of genius he is incredible and it was such an honor to work with him um yeah he's the most amazing person ever he is incredible um do you listen to girl in red i do i love girl in red <laughs> um how are you? I'm very good, thank you. How are you? <laughs> what is your favourite character in Harry Potter? Hermione Granger. A hundred percent. No questions asked. Or Hermione Granger. I want, I, I wish I could, I wish I was like Hermione. <laughs> um, if I could be like, oh, if I could be like Hermione, happy days. I definitely, but the minute I read the Harry Potter books, I started reading them when I was about seven, so around the time when I first began acting. Um, and that definitely, made me want to tell stories was reading the books and watching the movies I wanted these to bring these kind of stories to life and um, definitely the Harry Potters were such a big inspiration to me growing up so I and I wanted to be like Hermione so badly I am very bookish but especially back then I was very quiet believe it or not I know it's hard to believe from the amount I'm talking but I was very quiet when I was younger and so I was always kind of afraid to speak up in class and speak up in school because I loved school, but it wasn't cool to like school for some unbeknownst reason, and I don't know if it is now, but I it like school. It's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, she definitely gave me the confidence to be okay with being bookish and like school. So I definitely I really like school. You heard it here first, guys. I really like school. Um. Do you read J.R.R. Tolkien books? I do. I love The Hobbit and I love The Lord of the Rings. I absolutely adore them. Um, I feel like if Holly had to be in any other magical world that wasn't Artemis Fowl's world, I feel like she would fit right in with The Lord of the Rings, like that whole universe. I feel like she'd fit right in with The Hobbits and I feel like she'd be very much on board with going on a lot of unexpected journeys. And I definitely feel like she would beat a lot of dragons I mean she's she's pretty cool I feel like she, I feel like she should get she could get into a fight with a dragon and win what is your favorite music style that's a very good question I'm very big for, I love music I listen to pretty much every type of music um I love 80s music is probably my favorite like genre of music I love 70s 80s and um, I love 70s and 80s music um, and then I love indie music there's a band called The Academic which is an Irish indie band that I absolutely adore I was so lucky I got to see them live last year um in Dublin and that was amazing um 
they were incredible to watch and there's not many people that get to say they've seen one of their favorite bands live so that was incredibly cool um but i also i love classical music i love listening to soundtracks of films i find that so interesting because i love I love songs that tells a story and especially in movie instrumentals you can hear the story being told so that's definitely one of my favorites um well guys it is nine o'clock so i'm going to find ferdia shaw and i'm going to invite him in so you've been you've been waiting guys are you excited are you so, i'm very excited to see ferdia so i don't know how excited he is to see me but <laughs> Hi. Here I am. Sorry, I had a mad struggle. I've been doing lots of film stuff, so that's fair uh, enough. Yeah. What anyway. film stuff have you been now? What film stuff have you been doing? As my phone buffers, I apologize. I think Freddie's buffering. <laughs> so yeah, one second. Hello. I'll Let me apologize. Okay, so I'm seeing Freddie here, so I'm going to request him. And we will see what happens. <laughs> so I'm adding Ferdia. Ferdia broke it. Ferdia broke the internet. We heard it here first. Ferdia broke the internet. Hi. That might be better. Um, hopefully I... it doesn't happen again. I've no, got don't. Internet at the moment, but oh. um, yeah. You're all good. So everyone, Ferdia Shaw, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> hey. Um, so if you somehow do not know, because if you somehow i don't know how you couldn't know actually ferdia plays artemis and artemis fell and i'm going to annoy him and ask him a bunch of questions <laughs> sure he absolutely loves me for <laughs> so i have a bunch of questions here that a few people asked um for you and then i'm sure many people the people were so excited to see you ferdia so take take that happy as days. a few yeah ex happy days and um, so i have a few questions here and then a million um questions are popping up here so i have picked out a few and i shall ask you them and if you don't want Ooh. to answer that's completely fine <laughs> okay <laughs> so, um one question that was asked was what was your favorite scene to film i feel like i asked you this last time we yeah. talked but well, people might know. not have seen it so yeah exactly. um, so, yeah give people uh, what my they favorite want. scene <laughs> My favourite scene was the troll scene, um, because we were running around the house, it was a lot of fun, everyone was in it together, so we were all, I was able to see all the cast, because a lot of the scenes, um, a lot of people just weren't in it, um, yeah, so it was really nice to have the whole cast together, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> it's my Wi-Fi, I can't, just keep buffering in the wrong places. I'm um, talking a lot as, apologies. <laughs> Here, apologies. Yeah, um. Yeah, it, it was really good because the troll like messed up the house as well. So it was really cool to see the house demolished, um, which the film crew did. And there was lots of, lots of sugar glass as well, um, so that the glass in the house could break. You had to be really careful walking through the house because if you even topped it, it would break. Like, yeah, you, oh. you, like they were really careful. Yeah, continuity. Through <laughs> continuity was very big. If you don't know what continuity is, um we're both very big film buffs so and there are some people that might not know so continuity you have to make sure that in every single shot everything looks the exact same because although scenes aren't filmed in order they obviously have to look in order for the film so one of Ferdy's favorite things to do was to play with the sugar glass which caused the people from continuity to lose their minds <laughs> get it to Ferdy over there um at the end of you it, under the bus it really <laughs> yeah Oh, did you actually? Yeah, you know, yeah. Matt you know. from Props just gave me a bag. He was like, "Here you go." It was, it was, it was already <laughs> broken. I, I didn't really do much with it, but um, it's kind of cool. <laughs> you had it. And yeah. um, what other props do you keep? Because so you've kept a bag of sugar glass. So yep. What other stuff did? You so yeah, I I got the one wheel. Um, which is what Artemis rides in the film. Um, it was it was really, really good fun. I use it a lot to walk the dog. Um, I have a puppy called Leia. Um, she, she's really good. So I, I'd use it a lot for that. I, I ran it into a gate though. So I'm not using it at the moment because I took a massive chip out the front of it. But um, yeah, I hope to get it repaired soon. So hopefully I'll be hopefully. back on. And you can continue your tricks. So, um, Indeed. okay. Exactly. And um, did you always want to be an actor or was that something that like just came out of the blue? 
Like, you know, I think I, I've, I've always wanted to be an actor or at least get into film, like do uh -huh. directing, editing, stuff like that. Um, the so yeah, yeah, I've, I've always wanted to do something in that sort of a role. Um, so yeah, but like going into acting, because acting is very, you know, you, you go in, it's very cutthroat and uh, you go in not with high hopes at all because like, what are the chances that you're going to get the part? So every time I went into it, it was mostly just to see how the auditioning process worked and uh, just meet some really cool people. So I was never going in with high expectations. So I was going to get the part. So, you know, you just go in. Um, I, I, I never thought that I was going to be an actor, but I always hoped it. I totally get what you mean. I feel like especially yeah. for our show, because for you especially, but for both of us, the casting for Artemis was mad because yeah. it's such a big film and it's a Disney film. Like, Ferdia went up against 1,200 boys for the role of Artemis Val, which is props yeah. to <laughs> um, It was ridiculous as well because they kept narrowing down the figures of like how many people were left. Um, you, you remember, it was um, on the third audition. I had five auditions in total. And on the third audition, they said, okay, there's 12 kids left. Um, which was like, what, what the hell? <laughs> it goes from, like, Why would you tell me that? Number to nothing. Yeah. I felt that when I yeah. did Matilda, I like, had never really, I'd never auditioned for anything like this before. Like everything I'd done before, like I think I'd done one film before. And um, yeah. when I remember going in for the casting, there were like three girls there. Whether they auditioned like three girls for the role, I seriously get it. But I was like, wow. There's four of us. Wow. It's going to be easy. <laughs> no, but I was like, whoa, there are four girls here. This is crazy. <laughs> but when I auditioned for Matilda, it was like that in that I went for an open audition like you did with Artemis. So like yeah. any go for an open audition. And so I, there was, a, it was around the same number for Artemis, like 1,200, 1,400 for Matilda. And then it goes from that of walking in to like, they narrow it down to 50 and then it's 12 and then it's seven and yeah. then there's left. And it's so weird to see all these people slowly disappear. And you're like, wow, I can, can is this going to happen? And then it does. And it's completely mind blowing. Was that quite similar to Artemis then? The way the audition for Matilda? I think, I think more similar for your process, because with me, I like, every time I auditioned, there were, there were different, like there were different girls for every audition. Well, I feel like for you from the get go, there were so many, but yeah. for me, yeah. like it was just a little bit different but it was definitely similar to your audition process and it was completely mad for me because, same sort like, of lines though right like huh? um same sort of lines though like you wouldn't have to learn that many you know see because it was musical theater it was quite different so like i remember yeah. the first audition i went in like i had never like i'd done I was part of the choir in um, a show they did in the board in the board gosh energy theater, which is our main theater in Ireland and Dublin. Um, and I did um, Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dream Coat. So try saying that fast. But um, and I was like one of like yeah. low, kids. and that was the only thing I'd ever done before. And then I went to audition for Matilda, and all these girls they had done so many things in musical yeah. theater acting and they were like oh yeah I did this I did this what did you do and I was like <laughs> nothing nothing <laughs> <laughs> nothing <laughs> and <laughs> when we went into the first audition we had to have a poem and have a song and I remember we were all sitting in a circle and one by one you got up you said your poem you sat back down listened to everybody else's poem one by one you got up sang your song with no music then you sat down listened to everyone else's song and um, that went on and then the next audition you were taught a Matilda song and the next audition they gave you a monologue that you had to remember for every single audition and then it was another song and another song and another monologue and then it just kind of built up the material but yeah it was definitely I had no, I definitely went in with the same expectations I think we both did yeah. for Artemis of like oh this is a bit of fun yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 so, um, um, exactly the same yeah, just goes to show, guys, because like I think I definitely went in, and you've said multiple times that you went in, like that we went in, and we were like, "Oh, this will be a bit of fun," and we definitely went in with like no <laughs> expectations. Yeah, at yeah, all. yeah. Totally. We get to meet cool people. We get like we got to meet Kenneth Branagh. Like I got to meet him on the second audition on your third, and like so, and I got to meet you and loads of other kids. So like we had fun, and then it like we were like, "Whoa, this is actually happening. This is a thing." Yeah, 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 and <laughs> um, and like what it was like for you with Matilda um, because you'd come into Artemis with Matilda as well so like I, I was exactly like you <laughs> I, I was coming into this with like loads Not of these different point, yeah, you I were Matilda 
there was a girl who was in Star Wars. There was a guy who was in Room. Um, yeah. It was just like it was, weird as hell. Yeah, a hundred percent. Like, uh, definitely, Matilda did help me because, like, you said this was like the second audition you ever did. So, like, at yeah. least I had that like a little bit of experience. So, even though I didn't know exactly what to expect because, like, theater and film is so different. Like, I'd never done it. I, I. I'd never done a screen test before or like I'd ne I don't I'd never met so I'd never done an audition of this scale before but I did have kind of a little bit of experience while you were just thrown into the deep end and they were like okay <laughs> you're auditioning for Disney but <laughs> have fun <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah I'm actually just gotta plug my phone into charge because otherwise I will run out of battery oh, go for it don't Sorry do it like first time I ever did a live I did I started like uh, two months ago, a month or two ago, I want to say, I'd like never done it before and had uh, still yeah. have no absolute, have no clue what I'm doing. So apologies to everyone watching. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, but my phone died in the middle of the live and I got loads of messages afterwards being like, are you okay? Because the live just like ended. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I did even worse than that because my hotspot ran out um, because I was using a hotspot. I didn't have any data. Um, I, yeah, I, I, I had, I was using a hotspot to go into an interview and I just lost it halfway through and it was like five minutes before the last interview ended and, uh, it was just the worst because it, I was so close. You were in it. It was just the worst. So close. Yeah, I remember because yeah. you were really still for a really long time and I was like, either this is really impressive or something's gone wrong. So. Yep. Unfortunately, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I have a few, I have a few more questions for you. So a couple of questions that I got because something really cool that you've done recently is you did, you talked about you're a vegan, um, which mm -hmm. I know, um, but you talked about being a vegan and a lot of people want to know like what, what made you want, like you kind of talked briefly about it, but like what made you decide not just to be a vegetarian, not to be a pescatarian, but to be a vegan and to talk about it with pizza? Yeah. So like, like most people, um, I started off with um, a family. They, we all used to eat meat. Um, and like you kind of go through the stages of my, my, um, my older brother, actually, when he was four, was like, why do we eat animals? And uh, my mom said, oh, we'll just try it for a week, um, yeah. for example. And they, we all went pescatarian. Um, so that was where I started. And from there, we just kind of it was kind of a gradual process. You know, you go to vegetarian um, and then. After that, you're thinking, because, because you've hear, heard about veganism and uh, you're thinking, God, milk, eggs, like, you know, that doesn't hurt animals at all. Yeah. Um, every, you know, vegans are stupid, like, uh, <laughs> because, because there's no information out there um, of, like, why. The, like, soundbite of you saying that, it's going to be like, Bernie thinks vegans are idiots. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't quote me on that. <laughs> um, he does. But, yeah, he does, like, he's a very good vegan. <laughs> But like that, that, that was the original thing. Like most people, you know, that, that's the normal thing um, because people don't know why I'm vegan and why I boycott eggs and milk um, because there are reasons. Like uh, it's not because the animals, well, it's kind of a direct lead to the meat industry as well. Um, the, because animals start off in the industry with uh, milk, eggs, chickens, for example, because, because, uh, because they only want hens. Uh, all the male chicks are immediately killed, um, which is disgusting. Like, it, it's not a direct process, but it happens in the industry. So you're yeah. not actually eating the chickens, but they get killed because the industry has to keep going. Yeah. Um, so that, that's, that's why I don't eat eggs. Um, milk is quite a, similar, um, quite a similar thing. So, like, cows, in order to produce milk, have to have a baby. And obviously, the baby would take a lot of the milk. So the industry takes the baby away to be sold to the veal industry um, so that it doesn't take all the milk and the industry can make more money. Um, also, female cows, after a while, because it's such a strenuous process, they actually fall over from exhaustion. Um, they're called downers and they're, again, taken away to the meat industry to be slaughtered. So this isn't like completely for all farms, but these are like the factory grade industrial uh type farms. Um, but like, yes, yeah, so, so that would be, you know, your normal milk carton, all that, your normal eggs. Um, so you've got to make sure that you get them from the right place or like me, you go vegan, which is much easier. 
Um, I'm get, I, you really get to used to it as well. Like the first two weeks are really, really hard um, because you're wondering like, what the hell am I going to eat? <laughs> but, uh, but after that, you kind of get used to it. You find some recipes and it gets really easy. Well, thank thank you very much for that because yeah. I I would I would love to go vegan. I like I really I really admire you for going vegan, and I like it's becoming so much easier today, especially. But like I I went pescatarian for a while because I was kind of trying to transition into it slowly, and then yeah. well, just like it was in the middle of my exams, which is never the best time to do that. No, no, not at all. <laughs> so I just like I didn't know what to eat and I wasn't eating because I was I was just all over the place and then then I kind of went back to eating meat and then this year I was like no I would like to I'd like to try again <laughs> so yeah. I went vegetarian I went vegetarian for about a month and then um That's really one good. day um uh, I was pretty proud of it and then yeah. one day I completely forgot and ate meat so not well, my like, that's quite <laughs> important though like um just trying again like what you're saying there yeah. you know you tried the first time it didn't work out but what's the harm in trying again you know if if the first time doesn't work out and you end up eating meat like it's not the end of the day you know um you you've done it, for, it you did it for quite a long time i know um so that was a huge accomplishment in itself so what what's to stop you from going to it again um it's it's not the end of the road if you stop so yeah get back to it <laughs> so if Freddie is not inspiration to all of us I, I don't know what to tell you yeah a lot of questions were about that because it's yeah. great and I feel like a lot of teenagers don't like there may be a few teenagers but they don't speak up about it and you have done that which is really cool because there's definitely so much we can do and especially today we have so many yeah. so definitely an absolute inspiration ladies and gentlemen um so <laughs> Um, a question that I got for you was when you were auditioning for Artemis, which you, we kind of touched on earlier, were you like, because it was your second audition, were you nervous or did you completely be like, nah, it's fine? Um, again, again, it was only the second audition. So I, I, that that audition was weird as well. Um, <laughs> because when I got the lines, it was like, you know, this was the first callback I'd gotten. Um, so when you got the lines, it was like, whoa, we've got these, let's print them off really quickly, um, learn them and go off. Um, but my, I, I actually printed them off wrong and I only got the first part of the lines. Oh God. So when I went into the audition, I did the first part. It went really, really well. I was really, really happy with it. And they said, okay, now let's do the second scene. Ooh. And my heart sunk. <laughs> um, so th they gave me the second scene and I went out into the car door. And I learned it for five minutes and then they said, okay, now come back in. And we did the scene and it just went perfect. Um, it was ridiculous. Like I, I, it went better than the first scene, which mm -hmm. was the one I'd learned my lines for. Yeah. It was kind of like, you know, you, you're panicked and you're trying to do it as quickly. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and I kind of like, you know, it, it made them remember, oh, he's the guy who forgot his lines. <laughs> and wasn't so I think it could have been a good thing. Yeah. Well, I think definitely, so I, I I love, we both love the performing arts and something that obviously is a really big thing for actors definitely is that when you're telling a story, whether it be if you're doing a play or a musical or a film, you're going to have to do each scene. You're going to have to tell the story many times. It's like, especially in mm -hmm. film, you have to repeat a scene to make sure you get it perfect, to make sure you try out different things. With a play, you do it every night. Um, so you're do you're telling the same story again, but there's a different audience and obviously when you're watching a film there's an audience watching it for the first time and so you as an actor are supposed to be like this story is completely new and you should treat it as such and that's why I think it's so like you felt that the second scene went better because it was like fresher in your memory you hadn't completely yeah. learned it all so it's like definitely like as you said now that's not to anyone who's an aspiring actor don't learn your lines 15 minutes before you go into <laughs> that's not the lesson to take away yeah that's definitely no, like the lesson. It just be a lot of stress. <laughs> and that's not the lesson to take away here. But that's definitely something um, a lot of actors do. Like a lot of actors, they improvise or they kind of, they go off loosely on the lines or something like that, simply to give it that kind of like fresh feel, which I totally get. But so that's a little fun fact yeah. for everyone. <laughs> yeah, actually, um, Chris O'Dowd, um, I, I can't remember what film he was auditioning for, but I remember he got the part through running into the audition 
clutching his leg and telling everyone that he'd been bitten by a dog. Um, he hadn't been bitten by a dog, but it kind of m- made him stand out, um, mm. which was really funny. Yeah. Can you imagine if that like hadn't worked for him though, and they were just like, <laughs> Yeah, and he just like, they're, What, what they're... the hell are you doing? <laughs> He's like, No, 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 it's it's fine, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so someone asked, um, who out of all the actors and actresses of the many in the world, who would you most love to work with? Hmm. That's a very difficult question. I know. It's a tough one. It's um, a tough one. Yeah. God, I don't know. Like, I love so many TV shows at the moment. Um, I'd love to work with, I think, like, the Always Sunny guys. Um, I don't know whether you've seen the show. It's Always I have. Sunny and Phil. Yeah, you have. <laughs> um, but, like, not even the show, just, like, the way that they came to make the show. They made the pilot themselves, they wrote it, and then they just pitched it, and it went really well, and they made their own show. Um, but, like, they do they do everything themselves. They write their scripts. Um, obviously, they've got a lovely crew behind them. Like, But the start, it was, like, Glenn, um, Rob yeah. McElhenney, and Charlie Day um, all working together, and I thought that was really cool. Um, so I, I'd love to work with them, even just, like, meet them. Um, I also I also like Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul, so I'd love to work with those guys. I think those shows are unbelievable. Um, the best the best shows in the world. Um, I'm I'm watching Better Call Saul at the moment. I'm on season two and it's already amazing. So <laughs> definitely go check that out. Okay, good. he he's good taste in series and films. We can trust him. <laughs> okay, I do. So, um, so we're both in like secondary school. I like the equivalent of high school in other parts of the world. But like, um, a question that we got was like, what do you want to do after school? Hmm. Well, I, I myself, I think I'll go into directing um, or acting. I don't know. Um, something like that. I could, like, I, I, I'm going to branch into all I types of films. I'm you direct. I honestly, when when we filmed Artemis, something that we did, because in Ireland, um, I think it's just in Ar- not in England anyway, and not in America, but in Ireland, if you're in secondary school, we finish school at like end of May, middle of May. So when we were doing tutoring, Frody and I had no schoolwork to do. And um, while the other kids like yeah. had doubles did. It was so and- cool. So we decided because, you know, it's not like we were on a film set every single day. We decided to make a film <laughs> because <laughs> we're, we weren't making, it's not like we were, you know, making a film anyway. Yeah, like, <laughs> so, know, might as well. <laughs> and Ferdy directed it. And oh my goodness, I will be first in line to see the film you direct. I Every <laughs> film, any film you direct, I, I'm 100% on board immediately. That's something I want to see. Yeah, I, I'd I'd love to be behind the scenes. I think it's really cool um, to come up with new ideas and uh, yeah, just just write things. And I would be first in line to see them. Personally, for me, <laughs> I've had like I've I've had I've always been like ever since I was little like obsessed with the idea of going to college for as long as I can remember. Yeah. And, and so that's something. The minute I leave secondary school, I'm going to go to drama school, <laughs> which I'm very excited about. Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> because if you somehow didn't know, if you didn't tune in earlier, Laura loves school. So, um, <laughs> totally. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Everybody, you heard it here first. Birdie is me, <laughs> so, um, but um, I I can't wait to you go. It's such a horrible time though, like uh, <laughs> studying, you know, all all the time, just. Lara's least favorite thing to do at all. Stop being me. <laughs> <laughs> See, we have witnessed there are 187 people watching, and they're seeing you being mean to me. So I'm caught. You're caught. I mean, now yeah. you all know. <laughs> <laughs> Freddie, the the bully. That's what they called me on the film set. I used to bully everyone. Yeah. Mhm. Mhm. No. Uh, <laughs> okay, so what do you what are what are some things that you like to do in your free time when you're not when you're not acting? Um, I like to play tennis a lot. I like to play table tennis too. So very very different. Um, right right at this moment, I've been going swimming a lot. Um, in the river with some friends. Um, so that's really good. Seeing as we've got the hot weather, uh, it's it was actually raining a lot today. So. We haven't been getting it over the past few weeks, but it was really good. Um, I also 
completely different parts of the country. So the idea of swimming to me is I live in like the city, so that is completely insane to me. But anyway, Iris never it? seen water like. You know, <laughs> right at the top. I didn't even know it was a thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I I like to edit as well. I'm doing a lot for my filmmakers. It's kind of a after schools group that I work with. We make our own films and uh yeah, we, we put them out. Um that that's really cool and I do a lot of drawing as well. Um I like to do animation, I like to do um comics, I like to draw like graphic novel style comics so yeah, I've been really getting into that, watching like uh Stanley documentaries with Jack Kirby and stuff. If now isn't the time to do that. I don't know when it is. We have yeah. three. Yeah, we've got the time. Yeah, I have three minutes left, so I'm gonna I'm gonna speed through some questions. So guys, send in your questions. Um, I'm again still. You'd think I was better at this by now, but I'm really not. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, someone said I'm a vegetarian and I want to go vegan. And um, what do you suggest finding recipes and or products? That's um well at first i would suggest that you do buy the vegan alternatives so like um vegan butter uh vegan milk oat milk is really good and i still use that um it, it's actually not too bad uh coming down from cow's milk like a after a while like i would actually prefer it to cow's milk um but that's just because it's what you're used to but coming down um definitely go for oat milk because it's really good barista edition um also but once you get past that you've got to buy some really good recipe books i recommend bosch um they're really cool and they make some really um just kind of alternatives i make like these cauliflower spicy wings um which are really really nice <laughs> you do them batter and you fry them um but it's have you ever seen the show called hot ones um by any chance yes i have i have i have yeah yeah it's what they make in that basically um for the vegans um but yeah it, i get bosch and the happy pair they're also really good perfect so guys mm. you heard it here first absolutely absolutely pro right here so another question that we got asked was what's your favorite subject in school because we've established i love school so <laughs> <What's> your... <laughs> <Yeah>. pe <laughs> um like yeah english or yeah it, it's probably english I like writing. I like writing short stories, um, stuff like that. You you like English too. I do. Um, yeah, I'd say English. I don't yeah. mind maths actually, weirdly enough. Um, That's but, on board with, sorry. Yeah, don't yeah. Agree there. I don't think anyone would agree with that, but I like maths. Yeah, I feel like you're either a maths person or an English person. I'm an English person. Yeah, so. yeah. Okay, there's 30 seconds. This is- Go. Oh my god, okay. So, I really don't know what else to say because that's like way too much pressure to try and find a question. Oh, so a question I saw earlier. We both love Marvel films. Who's your favourite Marvel character? You've 10 seconds, no pressure. Rocket Raccoon. That's a good answer. Okay, so five seconds left. So I'm going to say goodbye. Thank you so much, Ferdia, for joining. And goodbye. Thank you for watching.